when the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to breathe something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus king of endless worth no one could express how much you we can call all I have is yours every single breath I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper Calvary Episcopal Church in Columbia, Missouri. We're so glad you've joined us for worship as we celebrate the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. This is a right to service of anti-communion, which means everything that happens before the sharing of communion at our regular Sunday service of Holy Eucharist. We have a full service bulletin for you on our website, www.calvaryonnine.org or you can follow along in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 355. Our hymns come from the 1982 hymnal, what we affectionately call the Blue Hymnal, and other approved sources. We began today's service with an introit sung by our own Marvin Bias IV, and we continue now with our opening hymn, number 492, in the Blue Hymnal, Sing Ye Faithful, Sing With Gladness. We'll sing verses 1 and 4.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. God is in you. And also in you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Hor. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that pe the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 16. We will read it in unison. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, 
but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 686 in the Blue Hymnal, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, and we'll sing verse 1. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said to the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. En el nombre de Dios, que es Trinidad, en unidad. Amen. Our Gospel story today starts with the religious authorities asking Jesus a question. By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? 
We who read this today have to wonder what were the things Jesus was doing. It helps to look at what led up to this moment. This chapter of Matthew's Gospel begins with Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, with people shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. This was a public reception of the Messiah by the people and a grand show of the divine authority Jesus possessed. Then Jesus goes to the temple, where he turns over the tables of the money changers in an angry application of this authority. While quoting the voice of God in scripture, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. It's important to remember, as one commentator said, that it is the authority of the religious leaders that Jesus defied when he overturned the tables of the money changers, because money changers would require the approval of religious authorities to pursue their business in the temple. Jesus usurped the authority of the religious leaders, calling out their corruption, lining their own pockets by exploiting the poor who came to pray. People began to flock to Jesus, and he healed them, even the blind and the lame. This display of divine authority was quickly winning over the crowds, and the religious leadership realized they couldn't control it. Which leads to their question in today's story. Jesus is in the temple teaching as a rabbi would be. The religious authorities who represent the holders of divine authority confront Jesus publicly asking him by what authority he had been doing all of these things. Jesus answers like a quintessential rabbi. If you can answer my question, I'll answer yours. And he asks them, by whose authority did John baptize people? Was it divine or human? Well, they can't answer divine since they didn't believe John or receive his baptism. Neither can they answer human since most of the people believed that John was a prophet sent by God. And if the religious authorities openly denied that, the people might revolt against them. The only safe response they could make was, we don't know. But their answer only further undermined their authority. True to his word, Jesus replied to them with a victorious dismissal. Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. While he had center stage and wore the crown of authority, Jesus publicly challenged the religious authorities to interpret his rabbinic teaching. What do you think, he asked, and he told the parable of the two sons. A father tells his sons to go to work in the vineyard. The first son says no, but ends up changing his mind later and going. The second son says okay, but doesn't go. Which son did the will of the father? Caught in another spectacularly laid trap, the religious authorities had no choice but to answer the first son, after which Jesus springs the trap. Speaking directly to the religious authorities who refused to repent when John called them to it, Jesus says, know this, even the wretched tax collectors and prostitutes who are like the first son will enter the kingdom of heaven before you who, like the second son, refused to repent. That's a pretty scathing rebuke of their authority, their morality, and maybe worse yet, their place in the hierarchy. Being used to being first, Jesus proclaims they will be last behind even the worst of the worst sinners in their culture. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. In case we missed that point in last week's gospel, it's repeated for us here. Why is this such an important point? Because it's at the very heart of our faith, and beautifully stated in our collect today. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly by showing mercy and pity. Think about that. God's almighty power is declared primarily in God's compassion for those who suffer and God's willingness to act to relieve that suffering. We who work in God's vineyard today are to declare this same truth and do this same work. I promise we don't have to look far to find people who are suffering and in need of compassion. With over 200,000 people dead from COVID, 
there are that many families grieving right now. Our isolation from in-person contact with friends and family is wearing us out. Add to that the pain and frustration of African Americans who are denied justice from an unjust system that allows armed white supremacists to storm a government office undisturbed while using lethal force against a child playing in the park or a woman asleep in her bed or an unarmed man with an obvious mental disability. We also don't have to look far to find people who need to repent. In fact, we only have to look as far as the mirror. We all need to repent. We need to change direction collectively and walk in the way of righteousness, as John the Baptist did. John was in right relationship with God and the people God sent him to serve. His oppositional relationship with the unjust, unmerciful rulers who eventually killed him was right too, because he called out the truth about them, saying what everyone knew but was afraid to declare, that they were corrupt and needed to repent. Like John, we need to be truth-tellers about our corrupt, unmerciful earthly powers, both historically and presently. We need to have compassion for those who suffer and be willing to act to relieve that suffering. We can do that by amplifying the voice of the oppressed among us, people who have been systematically executed, impoverished, and tortured by our earthly authorities. African Americans executed today as horribly as they have been for generations. Indigenous peoples who suffered near complete genocide and who continue to suffer in the third world conditions of the reservations we exiled them to. Mexican children taken from their parents and put in cages at our borders and now allegations of forced sterilizations of Mexican women in a detention center in Georgia. None of this is new in human history, but our response today can be. We can choose to repent. We can choose to realign ourselves in right relationship with God, whose almighty power is chiefly declared in showing mercy and pity. We can choose to get into right relationship with one another, respecting the dignity of every human being as our baptism calls us to do. We can choose to repent and bear the authority, the divine authority of God into our world today by letting down our guards and opening ourselves to feel and acknowledge the suffering of God's people among us instead of denying it or dismissing it or blaming them for it in order to maintain our comfort and advantage. We can choose to repent and bear the divine authority of God into our world by being truth-tellers, calling out corrupt powers and systems in our world, even when that might lead to our own discomfort. If we are to be of the same mind that was in Christ, we must, as St. Paul says, look not to our own interests but to the interests of others. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, Paul says but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Putting others ahead of ourselves is at the heart of our faith, for the last will be first, and the first will be last. I close with a prayer from our hymnal that sang in me as this sermon wrote through me. It's hymn number 594, God of Grace and God of Glory. Let's pray. God of grace and God of glory, on your people pour your power. From the fears that long have bound us, free our hearts to faith and praise. Cure your children's warring madness, bend our pride to your control. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days, serving you whom we adore. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith by saying together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the word of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now rejoicing in the promise of new life in Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with your truth and empower its people to joyfully share and live the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray for all ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Dion, Bishop of Missouri, Valerie, our Interim Rector, Janet, our Deacon, Mo, our Pastoral Visitor, and Josh, our seminarian. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you and that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for the whole world that you may fill it with your peace. Help us to honor and care for your creation and to use its resources wisely for the good of all. We pray for those who govern and hold authority that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world, especially for Donald, our president, Mike, our governor, Brian, our mayor, Stephanie, our county health director, and Peter, Columbia Public Schools superintendent. May there be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for those who are in need, for those who are hungry or homeless, for the sick and the injured, and for those who do not yet know God's love. We pray for those suffering from the two pandemics of coronavirus and racism. Have compassion on those on our parish prayer list and those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray especially for Anne, for John, and Phyllis. May all be delivered from their distress. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the bounty of the earth. We give you thanks and ask your blessing on all who are searching for treatments and vaccines to fight the coronavirus. And we pray for other blessings we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We will exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever and ever. Give to the departed eternal rest. Especially to Robert Brock. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. 
O God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. La paz de Cristo se siempre con ustedes, the peace of Christ, be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. And now, um, Tom Frankman, our vestry representative, will share with us the announcements for Calvary for this week. Tom? Thank you. There is always something happening at Calvary, and usually many things at once. Big announcements for this week is that there will be a virtual bazaar this year. It will be held on December the 5th. The items that will be sold at that bazaar need to be prepared by November 20th. There, are, there is more information about that in the Calvary News Bulletin uh, online. If you have additional questions, please contact Leanne Ball. Also, on October the 4th at 4 p.m., there will be our Blessing to the Animals. The 4 p.m. Uh, gathering, please reserve your spot for that since it is being held in a uh, small area, the Memorial Garden. Uh, beginning at 5 o'clock, uh, there will be a continuing uh, drive-by blessing of the animals in the back parking lot. It'll start right after the service at 4.15 or so and go through till 5 o'clock. Sorry, Tom. Um, <laughs> And if you have not already done so, please register on the new Calvary website, explore and register and get the full benefit. And our uh, online giving button on the, is available uh, also through your uh, Calvary newsletter. And that is a great way to quickly be able to help Calvary perform its ministry here in Columbia. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And now we have the privilege to sit back and relax and receive the gift of sung prayer offered to us by our own Marvin Bias the fourth. Turn back, O man. Yeah. Oh. 
And now we continue with uh, the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 344 in the Blue Hymnal. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing, and we'll sing together verse 1. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.